All right, let's get started. Um, this is our getting started with reference linking webinar. Um, just some housekeeping notes. Uh, the audio is muted. Um, we will send out slides and a link to a webinar recording shortly after the webinar has finished. And we do have, um, someone's already asked a question. Uh, if the past webinars are recorded, they are. We do record all of our webinars and they're available on our website. If you go to the side menu under the, um, there's a learn more tab. There's a list of our webinar schedule and links to past recordings of webinars. Um, but again, we'll send out the slides and a link to the webinar when we're done. Um, for now, if you do have questions, there is a Q&A uh, panel available. It's um, at the top of your screen. You can just uh, select that. And if you have any questions throughout the um, webinar, please free, feel free to type your questions in and I'll try to answer them as we go along. And if I don't get to your question, you can play some catch up at the end. So when you become a Crossref member, you're part of a community that has committed to share metadata and provide persistent links. We don't just provide a service, we build infrastructure as a community, um, and your, your efforts are a large part of what we've created. Um, so to go along with that, we do have some obligations that we ask our members to meet as they're in the best interest of our membership as a whole. We're, today we're going to talk about strengthening your relationship with Crossref by filling, fulfilling one of your most important member obligations, reference linking. Reference linking means you include DOI links in the references for your content where they are published online. When you become a Crossref member, your obligation is to provide these links with, within your current journal content. We ask that you commit to linking out from your references within 18 months of joining and are best practice is that you link from DOIs from that is that you link with DOIs from all references not just from journal content not just from current content and so that would include back content and non-journal content we ask you to do this because your primary connection to the Crossref community is through building these links you link out to members and they in turn link to your content most consumers of your content expect linked references at this point, and linking with persistent identifiers like Crossref registered DOIs provides persistence. You can trust that the links you create using DOIs will continue to link for the foreseeable future. You also don't have to work out agreements with other publishers for reciprocal linking. Uh, you're, you're entered into that reciprocal linking relationship with all Cross, Crossref members. So to sum up, when you create these links, you make connections that help to strengthen the scholarly infrastructure and drive traffic to your content, which is inarguably a good thing. So what exactly is involved in reference linking? Let's start with how to display your reference links, and then we'll get into how to retrieve the DOI links for your references. As I mentioned, we do encourage you to use DOIs whenever possible for linking in your tables of contents, new publication alerts, um, any metadata feeds you send out, and of course, in your references. Wherever you display your DOIs, we ask that you follow our DOI display guidelines. There's a link to the full guidelines on this slide, but know that the main thing we ask is that a DOI always be presented as a full URL. So a URL, a DOI URL should ideally use the form https uh, colon slash slash doi.org slash the DOI. Uh, you may see DOIs represented differently on other member sites as our guidelines have evolved over the years and not everyone has caught up. Um, in, in the past, we recommended people use dox.doi.org, but we've moved to https and the prefix doi.org. In the very distant past, um, DOIs were represented as DOI colon, but we've moved far away from that and we feel and we found that it's very important that people realize that DOIs are actually actionable, that you can create a URL with them. And if they don't appear to be a URL, um, and users don't realize that they can use that to link and they think it's just another identifier for citing. Um, persistent linking is a really important part of the function of a DOI. Um, so it is vital that everyone knows that a DOI is a link and that it is also the link to use when citing a work. 
um, some style guides still recommend that the DOI colon is used. Um, those style guides aren't updated very frequently, but we've had conversations with them and when they're re reissued with new editions, they should be um, displaying, recommending that DOIs be included as URLs. So when you're linking with DOIs, you can display the DOI as a full URL, as in the first example on this page. Um, we do realize that DOIs can be long and sometimes screen real estate is sparse, um, especially if you're generating PDFs. So you also have the option to create a link behind the text crossref, as in the second example, or you can also use some other text that indicates the link is pointing to an item's landing page. Like we've said, it's seen links to full text or article. Um, we find it's good for people to realize that they're linking with a DOI and that it's a persistent link. So I, the best practice is to use the full DOI URL. But um, as I said, we do recognize that that's not always um, going to work for you. So to implement reference linking, you'll need to look up DOI matches for your citations. We have a few methods available. I'll go through them in the order of complexity. The easiest option for most um, things in general is to get someone else to do it. Um, this is a little obvious, but since reference linking is a member obligation, it's pretty commonplace. So a lot of vendors who work with CRAFSREF metadata are familiar with reference linking and are able to work with that aspect of interacting with CRAFSREF, as well with your in initial on co content registration. Um, you can also have your authors include DOIs in their manuscripts. I know a lot of um, our members don't like to burden their authors, but if that's something you can ask, uh, people do ask their authors to provide that. Um, we, we've, got, um, we've got members that ask their authors to provide DOIs, and we do have some public interfaces for looking up DOIs that you can point your authors to or to use yourself. Um, many authors already cite using DOIs when compiling reference lists or using reference managers anyway. So requiring them can save you some work. Um, it really, again, depends on how much you're already asking from them and how much they're willing to give to you. Um, we also have some user interfaces and APIs, which I am going to discuss now. We have one primary interface that's used heavily for reference linking. It's called the Simple Text Query Form. Um, this is mainly used to populate long reference lists with DOIs. It's a bit clump, clunky and due for an all overhaul, which we've got something in the works. But for now, it does get the job done. Um, so I'm going to walk you through how to get your matches using this form. The first step, if you're new to the form, you do need to register an email address for usage. We do this because we need to track overall usage of the form, and it's unfortunately not hooked up to our overall system, so you can't use the same login you use to register your content. This form is used very heavily by authors and end users, but many publishers also use it to help with reference linking. Um, we do have some usage restrictions on this form. Breaking a citation up into parts for querying pur purposes can be complex, and we currently reference uh, license a reference parser from a third party. Uh, we use the XStyles reference parser, uh, which is uh, produced by Anera. It works very well, um, but it, we, we do pay for it, so we're not able to provide unlimited usage, unfortunately. We restrict usage to 5,000 matches per month. We found that this limit works well for most members who need to use this form because it is a manual entry form you're cutting and pasting. Most people aren't doing much more than that. Um, so if you do need to uh, more than that, you might need to uh, have a different workflow or use a different tool. So to use this form, once you've registered, you cut and paste your reference list into the form. Um, the form does support numbered reference lists, um, and it's pretty forgiving. Um, so it can take numbered or unnumbered reference lists. Um, it, it Obviously, it will work best with well formatted citations, but we do have some tweaks in place to help work with messy data. So once you've cut and pasted your reference list into the form, you select, select the submit button and fairly quickly you'll get your reference list back with DOI links included. 
you can cut and paste that back into your manuscripts. Um, note that when doing this, not all items have DOIs, so not all references will be matched, but it does pretty, a pretty good job of finding uh, a match if it is available. We also support an upload option that uses the same back-end technology as this tool. It follows the basic premise, but instead of cutting and pasting, you can upload a text file of references and have the matches emailed to you as an HTML file, and you can just take that and dump that into um, whatever tool um, you're doing, dump that back into your manuscript. Uh, usage for that option is also limited. We also have a metadata search interface that you can use to do a more free text search. It's handy for a number of things, but if you use it to identify DOI matches for citations, it doesn't return only the one true match like our simple text query form does. You do have to make sure the match you find is the perfect match and not just the closest match. Again, and to use that, you would just uh, cut and paste a citation into the form and it would turn, return a list of results. We have an XML-based API that allows you to submit citations and get a DOI match back if it's available. Um, this API supports XML formatted querying. XML queries give you a significant control over the, the DOI matching process. The XML API is designed to typically return only one DOI, the one that best fits the metadata supplied in the query, and it's therefore it's suitable for automated matching. Query results are returned in XML and will contain a full or abbreviated metadata record for matched items, depending on the request. The most precise XML query requires you to mark up each citation following the rules established in our metadata deposit schema. In the example on this slide, you can see that the basic citation metadata is split into separate elements. Each citation has a query key that you can use to match the result up to the corresponding reference. The query key usually corresponds to your reference numbering format. You can also refine your query by requesting fuzzy matching on an author name, for example, or you can ask our query engine to do an author and article title query if a full metadata query doesn't find a match. You can also submit a separate author and article title query if you don't have full citation metadata or want to be very thorough. Um, author article title queries aren't as accurate as full metadata queries, as it's not um, unheard of for an article to be published in multiple journeys or as book chapters, but it's an option. You can also submit an unstructured citation, meaning the reference surrounded by an unstructured citation tag. Um, as with the simple text query form, we need to break up this reference into parts so that our query engine can find a match. A well-formatted journal article is easy, Books and other content types are less easy, but we do our best with it. The unstructured citation query option is currently subject to the same limits as the, the simple text query form. Uh, there is a way around that, which I will touch on in a second. Um, just as far as uploading these XML queries, you can upload or post queries in bulk to our system. Um, we'll add them to our submission queue and process them asynchronously or most people querying opt to do an HTTP GET. Um, you're, you request results using an XML query as an ex in this example. The results of an XML query will contain the DOI that's been identified as a match, as well as the metadata we have for that DOI. So there's the DOI and then the full metadata. We also have a REST API, um, which can be used to search fa facet, filter, or sample metadata from thousands of publishers. Um, this information is continually updated as members add and update their metadata. Um, it's not typically the best option for automated DOI to citation matching, um, unless you're able to evaluate the results for accuracy, but we're, we're, it, we're getting closer and closer to the point where we can fully recommend that, so it's worth taking a look at. Um, it's very useful for bulk, bulk downloading of data or filtering on specific information like records with funding data, um, but it is a good option for any special projects you may have. Um, we also have an open URL um, 
method of querying. Um, it's a service used primarily by libraries, but you can use it to match basic metadata to DOIs. It's not as effective as our other APIs, but it's pretty simple to use. Um, and if you're already familiar with that technology, it'll do the job for you. So I do want to stress that we encourage all of our members to deposit references with us. Um, reference deposits are part of our cited by service, but you can deposit your references um, even if you're not participating in that service. Um, depositing references um, also helps strengthen scholarly infrastructure. If you aren't able to participate in cited by, you aren't able to query for cited by matching. Um, deposited references still helps other citation participants, other cited by uh, participants identify when you are citing their content. And as a result of that, they'll be linking to your content when they display who is citing their content on their site. You can deposit your references using our simple text query form. So if you're using that to query for matches, with a few extra clicks, you can add references to a registered DOI. You can also include references in your XML content registration files, either as part of the initial submission, or you can add references to a record after it's been registered. We allow you to deposit as many unstructured citations as you need to using um, XML. There's no limit. Uh, we'll try to find DOI matches for all of them. So we don't impose the 5,000 a month match limit on those deposits because um, we really want to encourage everyone to register their references with us. All right, so I have a... Um, here is an example of depositing references through the simple text query form. Um, if you'll look here, um, this is the results page after you've submitted a query using the simple text query. Um, you'll see there is a deposit button. If you click that button, you'll be taken to um, a screen that allows you to enter your deposit credentials and an email address, and those uh, references will be added to um, the appropriate article. Um, so again, just to sum, it, sum, to sum up, you can register your references through our simple text query form, or you can add them to your XML submissions. And if when you submit references using our your co content registration, uh, if you're submitting unstructured citations or marked up citations, we do our best to match those citations to a DOI, and we will record those DOIs in, in your submission log when that submission has been processed. So that is um, so you can retrieve those DOI matches from your logs. You can also use an API to retrieve the DOI matches for references you've registered with us. Um, and you can use these matches for reference linking. This means that if you do deposit references, you don't need to query separately for DOI matches for your references. You can deposit them and either review your logs for matches, or you can use this get identifiers API to retrieve our current list of DOI matches for your articles. And finally, um, if you need help, we have, I've provided some links throughout these slides, which again will be um, sent around, if not today, probably tomorrow, um, that they linked off to our support documentation. We do have a small but very capable support staff that are able to help you with any um, problems you run into. Um, we give support mostly by email, but if you, you know, you, you want to work through your workflow flow or um, ask some naughty questions, we can also, also set up a call and, and try to help you that way. All right. Um, that is all I have. If you have any questions, please, again, feel free to submit them through the Q&A box or feel free to follow up with us after the webinar by contacting support at crossref.org.